Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be my top 10 favorite mauve toned eyeshadows. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. I have been doing a color series once a month on the channel since the start of the year, and today we're gonna to be tackling mauve tones. I've done taupes, I've done blues, I've done greens, I've done a lot of different things. I've done purples, uh, and I already uh, listed a lot of like pastel-y purples that I liked then, but I knew I had to make a separate category for the mauve tones. And I was surprised when I went through my makeup collection that I didn't have that many shades that I really thought were mauve tones. <laughs> I think I've definitely gone more towards like the taupey things and we, we just haven't really gotten a lot of really good mauves in a long time. But these are my top 10 picks. So let me just get to it. But before we do that, if you're new here, hi, my name is Micah. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone. And this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I've been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love eyeshadow palettes, SS and Catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. Yes, top 10 favorite mauve tones. I have a couple of things, of course. Um, let's start with some singles first. If you wanna see me swatch, a lot of my favorite one and done eyeshadows, you're gonna have to stay tuned for next week because starting next week, we're gonna be doing single shadow week over on the channel. So we're gonna be doing some swatches. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun because I haven't done this in years to swatch out all of my cream powder and liquid eyeshadow. So that, that's a video you can look forward to next week. And now we'll be swatching out these ones yet again. You can see how they compare. Um, but yeah, I have two here that I just absolutely adore. Let me talk about this little tube guy here first. This is the RMS Beauty Strobe, no, Eye Light in the shade Strobe. That's what this thing is called. The packaging is atrocious. I do not like the packaging of this because it is like a painter's squeezy tube made of metal and then it just comes out like that. I don't love that. Um, is it secure? Yeah, but can you travel with this? I would say don't do that because if this gets squashed, it's just, it's gonna be a mess. Um, it's gonna get everywhere. So if you keep this in a vanity, then you're fine. If you keep this in a makeup bag, questionable, but this shade is lovely. And the best part is that I didn't even pay for this. Mind blown. Um, I got this as part of a little kit that I got from Sephora last year. It had the Living Luminizer in a full size. It had a mascara full size, and then this little eye light full size. For the price of the Living Luminizer which is the product I was after. That's the reason why I bought the little kit. But I was like, wait, the Living Luminizer is like only three euros less expensive if I buy it by itself than this little kit. I was like, sign me up. This way I can try some more RMS products. And that's how I came into this little eyeshadow. And it's been a favorite ever since I first tried it. Um, if you wanna see this going onto my eyelids, then I would recommend checking out my 31 days of one and done shadows short series, which I will make sure to link in the description box down below. I did that last January and I put on my eyes a lot of my favorite one and dones. It actually has quite a few of the sheets I'm talking about today, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely something that if you wanna see that, then you can. Um, and I will be swatching it, like I said, in the video next week, but there will be a swatch in this video, of course, as well, so. Uh, in this color series, I do swatch all of the products that I'm holding up. So yeah, the RMS Beauty, no, Eye Light in the shade Strobe. I, I keep thinking the product is called Strobe Light. Uh, super reflective, really pretty, shears out beautifully, sets itself into place. You can use this without a primer and you'll be fine. But I think the one that like the um, RMS one leans a little bit more taupe as far as a mauve goes, it has it has a very sort of dirty lilac quality to it, but if you want a little bit more of the purple, then I think the Glossier Lit Star in the shade Fawn is perhaps a little bit better. Now, I could have featured another Glossier product here, but I'm still currently testing it out. I have their eyeshadow palette in um, Mist as well, 
but because I have never used it and I've never put it in a review, I didn't want to already put it in this video because I was like, mm, is it like mauve toned enough? It feels more like a soft lilac. Like where do I draw the line between a lilac and a mauve? So that's why I'm just featuring this today um, before I've like, when I've tried that one, maybe next year it's like gonna show up in a video like this. But yeah, now I'm using this. I don't love the packaging on this one either because it is a little bit flimsy. Um, the doe foot is very, very long and it kind of wobbles, which is not great. But look at that shade. It looks so, so pretty on. It's Glossier. So this is going to be a wash of color only kind of vibe. That's just all you need to know. If you just know that this just shears out greatly and that, you know, it's just going to give you just a hint of color on the lid and that's what you expect going into it. I think you're gonna like it as much as I do. This again sets itself into place and it's absolutely stunning. But we can find mauve tones in palettes as well and I need to mention this guy. This is the Smoke and Mirrors from Gloss Gods. And Gloss Gods is a brand that I've really discovered this year. And look at this. And I, I like both of these, like these I would, say like this is more of a pink but these these heathery purpley shade i would call a mauve they're like very grayish leaning purples um and i think the one i want to swatch for you the one i'm going to swatch for you is the matte because finding a good matte mauve tone let me tell you about the magic of using a matte mauve or mauve if you're in the uk um all across the crease. Like if you put a shade like this into your crease, magic happens, especially if it's a matte. Why? And this is why mauve, taupe, teal, like I like these murky shades because no matter where you put them, it's just always going to look finished and it's always going to look nice. And I definitely feel that a mauve tone has that quality as well, provided in my case that it is a bit more cool toned. Um, and that's why, you know, things like that make a perfect one and done for me. Um, with this, you know, one of the most basic things I do is put this in the crease, this all over the lid and call it a day. And I've got to look, it's so stunning. It was limited edition though. It was. I'm so sorry. Um, I can't wait to see what else Gloss Gods does. I have three of their palettes now. I'm still on the hunt for the fourth one, but the color, color of rain, um, it seems to be going back uh, like in and out of stock all the time, the all blue shimmer palette. And it doesn't seem to be a uh, limited edition at all. So I'm pretty sure they'll bring it back at some point and then I can buy it. So maybe for Black Friday, who knows? I always feel that in October, some stock can be low because brands are saving things to go live for Black Friday. So they have enough stock in the sales season, you could say. So that's why I definitely think that I will be picking up that next palette. And I'm secretly hoping that they'll do another stunner of a palette like this for Christmas this year. That's the hope, fingers crossed. Next up is a shade I love in a palette I love, and it's the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz. I think if you're looking for good mauve tones that the Rose Quartz has quite a few. Um, and I'm definitely going to be pointing out this, this abundance shade. It, it's a little bit more taupey leaning, but I feel the taupe in the palette is definitely more like here. And this is more like, oh. <laughs> I've got a type again, you guys. This is definitely something that is, like this series is definitely teaching me here. Uh, they're different, she said. Um, but I just realized that it's essentially <laughs> some of the same things as this is doing. So if you missed out on the smoke and mirrors um, and you do have the Huda Beauty, um, maybe use the Huda Beauty. <laughs> It's not as gray tone though. Like it doesn't have the grays that the gloss gloss has, but these two shades were very similar to some of those lilac-y tones that the uh, Smoke and Mirrors has. So that's good to know. Uh, so here we have it. This is a shade Abundance. It's that shimmer. And I definitely wanted to make sure I put some good shimmers in here as well. So this is like that grayish purple, heathery kind of shade. I love shades like that in my on my, in my makeup looks. And this is shimmery enough. I feel that in the Huda Beauty, some of them are quite sheer and they are better for topping over other shades. But this is one of the shimmers in the shade that really make the palette for me. 
um, because it just has a lot of impact and I really enjoy that shade. Another palette I very much enjoy is the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz. And the Rose Quartz palette has a couple of really, really stunning shades, but I'm especially talking about this. Um, this shade right here, it perhaps looks a little bit silvery here, but I feel it has enough of a rosy purpliness to it that it can be a mauve tone. Uh, maybe when I swatch it, I feel differently. I don't know. Uh, by the way, if it looks a little weird with the lighting, um, I'm filming this at the end of the day because I had to go to work first and I didn't manage to film everything this weekend. So that's why we're filming this at the end of the work day. Uh, so I do apologize for the lighting. Um, but yeah, this shade is just absolutely stunning. Aether Beauty, sadly, the brand is no longer with us. I feel very lucky that last year before they closed down, I was able to pick up two of their palettes and I really enjoy the formula. Um, this one wasn't my favorite though. Of the two palettes as standalones, I like the Moonlight Crystal a little bit better. But as far as like neutrally tones go with a little bit of sparkle, these are really, really stunning. They're very sort of shimmery shades, but without them being too metallic. It's like the Huda Beauty one I feel is a full on metallic and this ha still has a satin quality to it, but it still looks very dimension dimensional because of how the shimmer is in the, in the actual eyeshadow. Next up, the Zoeva Precious eyeshadow palette. And this, again, something that I almost decluttered and now I'm so happy that I didn't because look at this section over here. It's so pretty. And I was like, when I was trying to look for warm tones, I was like, I also have to appease my warm tone lovers. And as far as a warm tone mauve goes, I think it's a warm tone that I feel I can still get away with because I have a cool to neutral undertone. So if I go for a warm tone, then a warm tone mauve is probably best for me. I still don't love it, which is why I think I struggled so much finding war like mauves in my collection right now to show you in the video. Not because I don't have them, but because a lot of the mauves I have are more warm toned leaning. And I was like, I do want to put something in. And then I thought, you know what? This is the shade in the palette I love the best. It is a little bit more rose gold leaning than I feel mauve, but I think this is a stunning shade. It's really impactful, high shine shimmer. So Eva no longer does this, I'm afraid. <laughs> Here we go again. Um, this was, I think it was a, like a special collection or a limited edition or something like that. Plus, so Eva has revamped their entire eyeshadow line and this is no longer available. It hasn't been for years, but. <laughs> We need to talk about this. And my uh, viewers who've been with me for uh, about a year or so know what's going on in this palette. If you're new here, my Naked 2 is a combination of Naked 2 and Naked 3 shades because I reorganize my color stories if they no longer appeal to me. And these were two very old eyeshadow palettes that I still liked, but there were particular things I liked about one palette more than the other. And I was like, you know what? If I combine it together to one eyeshadow palette, I might like it better. And I do, but in here, now I have to just be very careful that I tell you about the right one. Yes, it's this one. This shade here is called Mugshot from the Naked 3. And it's one of my all time favorite one and done mauve toned eyeshadows and it's just still is. So I just had to tell you about it again. I still love it. I still love it till this day. Uh, and the reason why I'm like, mm, but yeah, I remember this is B, this is YDK cause I kind of went like neutral mauve toned and then like more intense shimmers over here going deeper. Um, and I know that this is snake bite and this is verve. This is like factory or liar black heart. Like I know what all these shades still are. Um, and yeah, so this shade right here, I just really, really love and adore. I think it's absolutely stunning. And it's it's one that if if it existed as a single, I, I would own it. I think when we're doing the swatches, when I show you that, I think that one of the singles I'm about to show you is close to Mugshot because I'm about to show you some singles because we haven't done all of them just yet, of course. So yeah, Mugshot from Urban Decay. Still such a good one. 
I'm so glad I still have both of these. Like I still have the Naked 2 and the Naked 3 as backups in my makeup collection because it's palettes I could never be without. But yeah, now I feel it's even more perfect. So yeah, the Naked 3 Mugshot shade is life. And then I just have some matte neutral shades in this single eyeshadow palette. And inside it, I have a couple of de like deconstructed Natasha Denona shades in here. So I sometimes also just pull eyeshadow from eyeshadow palettes and put them in my singles collection. And in the Lila, we got this matte. I, I'll look up what the shade name is because I don't remember and I didn't write it down. So I do apologize, but I'll try to put it in the description box so you know. Um, and this this thing right here, it's it's such a lovely, it, it looks very gray here, but I feel it has enough of a purpley undertone for it to be a mauve. Um, it's, it's sort of borderline gray though. Uh, I do realize that. So I do apologize if you feel this one is too gray toned, but for me, it was actually quite perfect. Um, it's a really stunning crease shade and I've used it in some of these single eyeshadow palettes that I put together earlier in the year. It's just an absolutely stunning, stunning shade that works as a crease shade just fine. It's not too purple. It's got enough of the neutral tones, but it still has enough of a purple to it that it goes with other purples. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm not sure I'm making sense. Yeah, the matte from the Natasha Denona Lila had to get a mention here. Oh, and Natasha Denona eyeshadow is one of my favorite formulas, not gonna lie. And then we have another singles palette. And in here, I've got two shades. This is my singles shimmer palette. And this is the shimmer palette with the more satin leaning shimmers rather than the metallic-y ones. So over here in this corner, I'm not sure if you can see, but this is like more gray and then we've got some like greeny gray things and this is a little bit more brown. And then here sort of we get a sprinkle of the mauve tones, which I really enjoy. This shade here is Troops from Sydney Grace and that's the one I wanted to mention here. It's a really pretty grayish lavender like, sort of shade, but it's got a bit of a gold sheen, which makes it incredibly, like, incredibly special. It has quite a lot of shimmer to it. We all know I love a little bit of Sydney Grace's um, single shadows. I really enjoy their formula. If you want to, if you want to know, Sydney Grace is my favorite single shadow formula till this day. Nothing has beaten it so far. It's great. They do a ton of different shades. I believe this is part of their regular collection, so you should be able to pick it up. It swatches beautifully. It looks stunning all over the lid. Um, great one and done. It has a little bit of like too much shimmer for my liking for it to be like the perfect one and done shadow, but it's definitely a really good one. So I'm loving this one. And finally, this perhaps looks like a matte compared to all of the shimmers, but this is Max Shale. And this is the one that I think is going to be the most similar to uh, the Urban Decay Mug Mugshot uh, shade. I'm not sure if they still do shale. Shale is a little bit more sheer though. I believe it's a luster, if I'm not mistaken. Like it's a MAC shadow that just seems to have less pigmentation, but that's intentional. MAC has different levels of shimmer and shine and pigmentation in a lot of their shadows. And Shale, I always feel was a little bit misunderstood. It is one of my older MAC shadows. That's probably why, like you can see that there's a little bit of a dip there. So I feel that Shale is one of those shadows that I would just like pick up with a brush, swirl it around and just dust it all over my face. It was incredibly lovely for that. Um, and I would just use it all over my lid. Like this was de definitely back before I even know how to apply an eyeshadow. And I was still using fingers and sponge tip applicators to apply it and it worked beautifully for that. Um, so yeah, shale, an oldie but a goodie, but I still really like mine. So those would be my top 10 favorite mauve toned eyeshadows. Definitely let me know in a comment down below what your favorite mauve tones are. I would love to know. And yeah, um, let me know what colors you still wanna see me do. I think, ooh, I think I still wanna do like metallics, like silvers and golds and those kind of things because I'm not a huge fan of golds and I'm also not an overly big fan of silvers. Um, I think I got a request for doing grays, but grays is like my least favorite eyeshadow. <laughs> 
I just don't like grays. I think they're too one note. I like it if they have a little bit of oomph to them. So a mauve or a taupe, yes, but a straight up gray, it's just so gray. So I don't love that. Um, but yeah, just let me know if, uh, and then I'll see what I can do. I definitely think I have all of it planned out for the end of the year, but if this is something we're interested in, and then uh, of course I can keep it going in 2024. Uh, I'm already sort of thinking ahead here. Um, so if that's something you'd like to see me do, then definitely let me know. Um, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. Thumbs up this video in the meantime to support the channel as well. And uh, yeah, I will be back with a new video for you very, very soon. So take care everybody, have a good day. Bye-bye.